Good rising, good rising, good rising family. Black Phoenix is checking in right now. I, I am at the headquarters. And I wanted to just talk to you about welding and raising my daughter after 10 years in prison. <clears throat> I had a few people ask me about my experience incarcerated and my experience being free of welding right after I got out of prison. Uh, I released a few videos in my archives. I'm going to have to like reshare them to give you more uh, in-depth input. But I wanted to address this because I really feel that as, as Black men, as African Americans, we have issues when it comes to the fatherhood role and actually being a father and wanting a father because a lot of us grew up without a father. You know? I grew up with a father in the household and then he separated himself from the household. But it was more like he was there, but I didn't. It's more like the father was there. Peace, God, peace. Uh, it's more like the father was there, but he wasn't active in my life, you know? And then the drugs stepped in. And then my whole life went to another level. And then that was, my mom started raising us as single, you know, her being a single mother. And then... I ended up going to prison at the age of 16 through the age of 26. And before I went to prison, uh, I was with a female that was actually a few years older than me, and she had just got pregnant. And that's when my daughter was actually conceived right before um, I went in. So she was born while I was in prison. She was born July the 21st. I'll, I'll take that back. I'm sorry. My son's birthday is in July, too. She's born in July the 3rd of 97, 1997, and my son was born July the 21st, so of 2010, actually, was that 2010, I'm sorry, 2011, he was born in 2011, so um, her, our connection, our relationship all was built on um, an incarceration, like a pen pal type situation where we literally had to uh, correspond through her even sending me drawings or trying to write me, telling me she missed me and, you know, asking me, you know, questions, you know, when she was old enough to ask me questions. And so when I got out of prison, it felt, it felt real genuine, you know what I mean? And sincere from her, from her mother, actually, to want to allow me to raise her, you know what I mean? Because her mom sent her to me. She said, hey, I'm going to let you get her for the summer. And at first, it was just going to be a summer thing. I'm going to get her every summer, you know, spend some time with her. And then after I got her for the first summer, she was like, hey, I think you should keep her. You did that time. You was gone for 10 years. I've been raising her. I want you to do it, you know. And then you sent her to me for the summer. And that way, you can have more engagement with you. And then, you know, my daughter, she she liked the fact that she knew I was, uh, she was my first child and my only child at that time. And, um, you know, she was a daddy's girl, you know what I mean? She enjoyed the fact of being around me, you know what I mean? And she couldn't wait to see me. And um, that encouraged me a lot, you know what I mean? So I remember when she got there, it was a completely new experience because you got to think, you know, I get out of prison, I'm married now, I got a relationship uh, with a lady, and uh, she has a child that's living in the house, a son. Uh, at the time, you know, he was young, so... You know, it made the situation good with me and my daughter because, you know, they was close to the same age, so they was friends. And then she had a, um, a daughter that I think was actually the same age as um, my daughter. So, you know, it kind of helped the relationship. You know, I, I don't think it was too bad starting out. But I'm going to be honest with you, as a father, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. I got out of prison. I mean, I took some parenting classes to try to learn how to talk to your children, how to discipline them, um, how to reward them. But still, you know, when it comes to putting that stuff in application and actually doing it, it's a whole different ball game, you know? And I'm going to be the first to tell you that, you know, I fell on my face a few times and a lot of it to me, honestly, came from, now that I think about it now, you know what I mean, that I'm free. Um, I was in a, a controlled environment for 10 years. And during that 10 years, you know, it kind of put me in a different mind state. You know what I mean? So it, it made me think of, I was. it was like a real controlled environment. And the environment was real, 
vicious, I'm going to say scandalous, you know what I mean? So it was like kill to be killed. And when it comes to empathy, you know, it was hard to have a lot of empathy because that could get you killed in there. That could get you raped in there. You know what I mean? That could put you in a bad situation. So I had to work on, and I'm still working on the empathy part. You know, some things I didn't understand, you know, being a father, she wanted me to understand certain things that I actually didn't understand, but I gave my daughter a lot of, uh, <clears throat> a lot of, a lot of room. You know what I mean? I wasn't real strict on her, but I watched her, you know what I mean? But I allowed her to, you know, I allowed her to grow up. I allowed her to, uh, actually have a childhood. You know what I mean? She went to the prom. I never went to a prom. I never graduated high school. So to, to be with her and encourage her and help her, you know what I mean? Graduate high school when she graduated high school. And um, can't say that was all um, all on me neither because uh, my wife that I'm married to now, she helped me a lot. <clears throat> so I can't just take all the credit on that because I did get some assistance, you know what I mean? But um, I stood it out, you know what I mean? We really worked it out and uh, we had to, you know, work through some kinks, you know what I mean? So, you know, when, when you're being a father, it ain't like they give us a book, especially you got to think. I went to prison as an adolescent. I get out. I'm a father now. You know what I mean? So it's a different ball game, and I'm having to learn everything hands on. You know what I mean? So all I knew how to do was to show love. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to work. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to get you the things you need. But when it was like just saying love a lot, you know, a lot of people, and we do, we need that, that nourishment and the um, affection, you know, you need both. You need that, that hug and that love and say, hey, I love you. And just, you know, we didn't do, you know, we did some of that, don't get me wrong, but we didn't do like more than I wish I, I would have did more. So now like my, like my baby girl that's 13, I want to spend more and more time, you know what I mean, with her as for really getting to know her. Like me and her, we talk a lot. So I can say that me and our relationship is a little bit more open than my oldest daughter. Now, we still talk, don't get me wrong. Right now, we're like in that situation where you know how, you know, your kids grow up and you have to let them find themselves. And so right now, we're going through that. I'm letting her find herself stage, but I never turn my back on my baby, you know what I mean? Regardless how, you know, you, you know, once your kids get grown, my daughter's 23 now. So at 23 years old, you got to let a, a person be grown and just experience life, but you always got their back, you know what I mean? But you learn things as you experience them. Man. And I realize as a father now that, you know, I can't say that everything just went left field because it didn't. You know, my daughter graduated high school. Uh, she graduated cosmetology. Um, she got a side hustle doing her and she got a job. You know what I mean? She got her own place. She got her own car. Uh, so she do have two children. And like I say, she she's doing her thing. I appreciate that. Thanks for that love. I appreciate that. And um, she um, she's doing her thing, you know what I mean? But it's still things that I taught her how to hustle because that's what I knew. I taught her work ethics and not to give up. So she she know how to make money. She know how to grind. But, you know, when it comes to emotional issues, that's that those are things that we have to work on. And I have to work on, too, because those are a lot of things that, you know, after doing time like that, you kind of oppress a lot of issues. You oppress a lot of thoughts and emotions that you don't really pay fully attention to because you're in that environment just trying to survive and you don't realize how scarred you are emotionally, you know, until you actually deal with your kids because you don't want to be, you can't be hard with your kids. You got to be firm with your kids, but you don't want to treat your kids like an inmate. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to treat your kids like, a stranger on the streets or you don't want to treat nobody that you really love like that so being in that environment it tends to like trigger you to think like that at times I mean as far as like saying like certain things you don't have excuses for or you have zero tolerance for you can't just be like that when it comes to raising your kids and you know you have to be you have to have some um some wiggle room, you have to have some give and take, you have to compromise on some things, you have to be willing to negotiate because this person is a a person, it's a complete person yes, it's your child, but this is a complete different human being, so 
Uh, you have to learn. And then plus, she's a different gender. She's a woman. I'm raising her and then her mom passed. So I, even though I shared that in another video, I just wanted to say that her mom did pass while she, so I never got a chance to send her back, you know, for those summer vacations to visit her mom because her mom passed. So then it was just me and her, you know. She got her other siblings and her grandmother, but when it all said and done, it was just me and her. So I knew I had to raise my baby, you know. And life happened, man. Oh, my goodness, life happens. You know what I mean? You get out of prison, doing all that time. You be in relationships with uh, with uh, with women, with females, and things are not what you think they are. You know, I can say, you know, we be naive. Especially after doing 10 years, you, you think certain things are what they are, and they just, it is what it is, you know what I mean? And I had to learn certain things, you know, I was naive to certain things that um, I can't say that I regret because I was just naive to it, but now I'm more open to it, you know? And when you're dealing with your kids and you're being in relationships, your kids come first. Your kids always come first. You don't never put your kids before your relationship before uh, your kids. You know what I mean? That can really scar your kids. So don't never do that, in my personal opinion. You know what I mean? I would never do nothing like that. But I have seen people who have done it, and it just, it's just not a good thing to do. You know what I mean? Um, you have to watch that. You have to watch who your kids are around. You know what I mean? You, you don't want them around the wrong people. <laughs> So, you know, I was protective of her in that aspect, but also, you know, I also let, I would say, she's seen some things that she probably shouldn't have seen, but you know, life is what it is when you're raising your kids, you know, when you, you, you don't really know, you know what I mean? It's like, they don't give us no booklet, booklet, you know what I mean? They just say, hey, here you go. And then, you know, we young, you know, we, you know, they say that you, you grow enough to lay down and make the baby. Now you need to be the man or the woman to, to raise the child, you know? So... It was all a learning experience for me. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, it was all um, a lot to take in. You know, even now, like I say, my daughter now is 13, my baby girl. And um, I'm working on our relationship being better, you know, learning from my oldest daughter. And even though ours is going to improve, I still want to improve. Uh, my daughter, my daughter that uh, my baby girl now, because, you know, as you learn, you get better, you know, and my son, I have three kids. So um, my oldest daughter is 23. My middle daughter is 13 and my son is nine. So I'm having a chance to learn how to be a father. You know what I mean? And after, after that time, you know, I read about fathers. I, um, I looked up to some guys who I felt was fathers in there. And even to this day, you know what I mean? And that's how I do a lot of learning because a lot of stuff we don't know from our environment or where we're from <clears throat> or where we uh, grew up at, we really don't know, you know? So we have to look at someone else. We have to find a guy, a leader, uh, a mentor, someone that's actually doing it. And you might not even be talking to this person. Like y'all might not even uh, associate, but you can follow them. You can read their information you can use those to uh help make you better and that's all i'm doing you know what i mean like i'm learning as i go i can't lie you know what i'm saying like so you know um i just wanted to say that because i had a few people asking me about it and um my baby you know i love her to death you know what i mean she'll forever be a dad's girl you know what i mean but as as you grow up you learn different things you have to work on you know so i think that as a man told me this before i let y'all go i'm gonna share this with y'all before i left prison a guy told me this and now it's more potent than ever because i think about it a lot he says son when you get out of here i want you to live your life like you're gonna die tomorrow and i want you to learn from life like you're gonna live forever I didn't really get it at that time, but I get it now. As we experience things, we just learn. Even though we don't know how long we're going to be here, we have to embrace those experiences. We have to embrace those loved ones, our family. We have to use those experiences, mistakes and bumps in the roads to get us over that hump, you know? 
and to realize that we have to take care of ourselves. We have to be safe and cautious as, as we can. But we're not going to make it out of here alive, you know. So it's good to enjoy our family, to do all we can, to be all we can. Because that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So I take that to heart now. And um, now all I do is, you know, I want to be better, you know. And I think as we grow, we want to be better, you know. You should never get to a point where you want to be stagnant at anything, you know, even in welding and fabrication and when we coming up with ideas, I want to get better. I want to be better. You know, I don't ever want to get consistent where I'm like, oh, okay, I'm good. Nah, I want to always improve. You know, I made a post the other day that said, it's okay to give up being good, to be great. And some people didn't really get it. They were like, giving up being good. But yes, you know, sometimes we settle this and we get to a certain point and say, well, I'm good here. But you can be great if you keep pushing. And I want to be a great father. I want to be a great um, teacher. I want to be a great leader. I want to be a great mentor. And I want to improve on what I do. You know, I want to be a great husband. I want to be a great son. You know what I mean? A great nephew. You know, so a great brother. So in order for me to do that, I have to constantly work on me. So, and I know that that's something that we get over time. We learn over time, you know, so never stop working on you. Never stop improving your relationships. Um, and just this thought too, a guy told me this. He said, hey, when you get out, don't try to catch up. Because sometimes, you know, we don't, we miss time with our kids. We miss from relationships and having to move or working or overseas, whatever the situation is in the service, everybody got different uh, scenarios. And a lot of times we want to get back in our lives and we try to hurry up and throw all this stuff on them because we missed all that time, you know. You can't catch up. You can only check in. And that's what he told me. Just check in, man. Check in where you where you can, where they let you in at, and y'all build from there and keep going. But you can't make up from lost time. It's, it's gone. All you can do is make new times, make new memories, you know. So even though you lost time, once you be able to get that time to spend, just check in and do what you can from there. Because the time that's wasted is wasted, you know. The time we spent already is already gone. So all we can do is live a better day today and learn from yesterday. So before I go, I want to make sure that I look at everybody's comments. I've seen a couple comments that I didn't get a chance to address. Hey, you know, it's crazy because the system does use um, child support. I know some people that's in some situation. I have been in the situation, so I get it where the system does use um, that against us. And, and, and to be honest with you, you know, when it goes back to our history, if you go back to us as black men, our black history and how things was on the plantations, because I'm from the South. I was born in Little Rock. Um the young bucks, the the males, which used to breed, do a lot of breeding, and they'll take you to different plantations, and they'll breed you to, you know, to produce different, uh, stronger um, breeds to do different jobs and, and uh, be able to multiply that service that they offer. And then you get where well, a person is free and they're used to being moved around to sleep with different people because that's what they was told to do, you know? And then you get in a relationship where you do certain things unconscious and then now they have proven that it takes generations to break a curse. So now we have these black men, in my personal opinion, that you see from the South, especially from the South that has been, that's still there. And even those families that leave because they have family that was born in the South. You got black men with issues with, you know, being faithful to their wives. And not because they don't love their wives, not because they don't want to be faithful, but because they got some issues that they never really resolve, deal with. And they do things off impulse. It's like a bull that breeds. He ain't really tripping on what female cow he breeds. He just want to breed whatever one that allow him to do it. And there's no emotional attached to it. 
And there's many relationships that's like that where black men get involved in relationships with no emotional attachment, but just want to have sex with another, you know, another woman, you know what I mean? Or whatever the situation might be. So as the more I learned about history, the more I learned about how we got damaged and we have to really go back, back and work on that. You know what I mean? So in order for us to be better, we have to do some homework. We have to realize that history repeats itself. And so we have to go forward back enough in history to realize why we do certain things, why we act certain ways, why we uh, carry ourselves in certain ways, why we think like we think, you know? So in order for us to do better, we have to do some research and we have to constantly work on ourselves. And um, raising my daughter out to prison was was a tough situation, but I survived it. And um, needless to say, you know what I mean. We still work on our relationship to get better. You know what I mean. It's a, it's it's a process, but I do feel that I didn't give up, and I think that's the main thing when you're doing something like this, when you when you're raising a child, when you're when you ruin someone and you never did it, don't give up. And listen, listen, listen to your child too. You know. Um, I realize that God can speak to your children just like he can just like the devil can use someone you know so keep that in mind and know that um, it's going to take both of y'all you know to build a relationship or to build any relationship it's going to take two people so y'all be blessed it's Friday enjoy enjoy your Friday be safe on the ground I got some stuff I got to do I'll probably tune back in later to uh, do some live welding and some fabrication uh, everybody, just want to salute everybody. Hope everybody be safe. Want to say love, show mad love to all those who follow me, support me. I appreciate it. Thanks for like, sharing, and all that good stuff, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Hold on.